guess we should say welcome to the first episode of American Party Podcast. We talked about it. Yeah. Now well, I mean, it, it was by popular demand, I suppose. Yeah. It was kind of a joke at first. It was. It started at your house about a month ago. <laughs> it did. Uh, and we were just kind of, you know, talking about the uh, intractable positions that everybody from these binary political parties take and how it's, you know, become a problem and how there's a lot of people, I would say the majority, like I think the real silent majority in this country are people who just want things to work the right way. Yeah, like like it's 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 as simple as it gets. It's the yeah. right and wrong thing, mm-hmm. right? And I don't think that we have, you know, I think the thing that people like is is that we can break it down in a, a way to where, like, it's relatable to everybody, right? It's not like overly complicated. Like, right. it, it's like here's the facts. Well, I mean, look, we're both pretty smart dudes. Uh, I've got a, a litany of degrees and all that nonsense, but we're still grunts, and you have to be able to talk to people at their level. Yeah. And I don't, that's not, that doesn't uh, mean the, you, you talk down to them. No. It means you, it's just like a child. You get down on one knee and you look at them and you're like, hey, here's what's going on. You're a parent. You know what I'm talking about. But the majority of, you know, like when, when people talk to their kids, the reason they can talk to them is because they've been through it. Right. Of course. Yeah. And, and, true. and the majority of, the only difference between children and, and adults is that adults have lived longer and have gone through more, right? That's right. why it's experience. It's yeah. experience, yeah. right? So I think I think the cool part is is that, you know, um, the majority of America are grunts. I think so too. There, I mean, it's there, there's a lot more. Just when we say grunts, obviously we're referring to the infantry, but in in normal society, it's just people who keep their head down and mouth shut and do the work. You know and what just I mean? Get it done. And it's I think people like that they they don't have the time to to form their own sophisticated views on political issues because it, it takes a lot of time and research and you have to really, this is what happens. People go out and into the, the news media and find somebody that they kind of agree with and, and seems trustworthy. And they just like take what they say at their word. Right. Yeah. Which, you know, you know happened with Rogan this past week, by the way, yeah. um, he repeated something that wasn't necessarily true. And he spent the next couple of days apologizing for it because he, he also is a smart man and he understands the gravity that his words carry when he says something, people believe it. But, but I mean, but how many of these problems that we've got out there right now would be fixed and be over with if, if people just like, Hey, I fucked up. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been listening. I've been, I get into uh, Facebook arguments all the time Yeah, but when I'm bored or whatever. And it's not because I really, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. I just kind of like to do it to take the temperature of what's going on out there. And it's getting worse. I mean, the, People just subscribe to one of these ideologies or another for the most part, even if it's libertarian, uh, and they will hold fast to whatever the talking points from that organization is, and it's they become completely intractable, and it's that's not the way to live your life. I mean, if if anything changes in your life, typically speaking, the right move is to change with it. You know what I mean? Like, you have to adapt. That's that's one of the most critical parts of being a grunt or whatever you're going to call it. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, look, I mean, you take, you know, we, when we went into the Marine Corps, or when I went into the Marine Corps, I mean, especially when you went in the Army, I'm sure, I mean, you were probably learning Vietnam tactics. Yeah, right? yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, for v- sure. Vietnam tactics, but yeah. then you go to Iraq. They finally added uh, Battle Drill, uh, what was it, 8, that was under a building, clear, or Battle Drill 6, under yeah. a building clear room. Yeah. Like, at the end, I'm like, geez, this is all we do. But but, but think about yeah. that, right? Like, like, but, but now I bet you the next generation is going to learn about how to do urban warfare, right? Like, like, like desert fighting, right? right? So, I mean, you know, I think, I think that that's going to be like, even in business, no matter what you mm-hmm. do, like how you can adapt to the change is ultimately going to be the rise and fall of you, right? Of course. Yeah. That's biology. I mean, it's, it's, it's what our universe is that, that is one of the f- founding laws of our universe is adaptability. And, uh, you know, creatures that evolve with certain traits do better than others. And now we have the ability to do selective uh, evolution, I guess, if you want to call it that. So you get to decide what you put into things yeah. and what you get out of them, right? And everybody's a little different. Everybody's got to do their own thing. But there's one thing we can't do, and that's lie to each other. Because yeah. two people that are both telling half-truths to one another, not only are they not being honest so they can't communicate in a real way, but they're also feeding bad information out into mm-hmm. the environment. And just like a game of telephone, that gets worse over time. And the other side thinks, well, everybody over here believes all this nonsense, and this person doesn't represent everybody, firstly. And second, they don't know anything. 
They just said a bunch of dumb shit. Well, and, and, and if you've only had one experience, you can't, you're not an right. expert. No, no. And, and frankly, uh, like what I, what I'm seeing these days, uh, is people on the left that are, that have this level of cognitive dissonance that is breathtaking, like the ability to promote a candidate like Joe Biden, regardless of how bad they might think Trump is like, I forget about that. Biden has said and done a bunch of racist stuff. He authored the crime bill, which has had a worse effect on black Americans than any piece of legislation maybe ever. Yeah. Right. And they still feel like that's a good thing to do. And on the right, what I see are mostly very, very misinformed people reposting dumb political memes and videos that are completely on. Un- they're clearly untrue. Yeah. You know what I mean? But who is the who <laughs> we, we were talking about this earlier? Who's the authority on truth anymore? I don't think there is one. I mean, it's certainly not the media. Because they're hey, how about this? Like, 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 let's don't even let's don't even go like let's don't even put that weight or authority on somebody. Like, who who is the authority that we can trust to give the best opinion after looking at all the facts? Right, like right. the best opinion with all the facts. Yeah, that's why I think that uh, people in the news media that identify as one political party or another, you should be fired. Like it, that, that yeah. should not, that it should be illegal. I think the media is too important. Like you don't want the government controlling the media, but there should be controls on who becomes the media. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't think anymore that I don't think there is a such thing as a journalist anymore. I think they're all, no, opinionist. it's just clickbait. Yeah. It's all, they're all yeah. opinionist. Yeah. I mean, there, I, there are very few writers out there there. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll correct that. Uh, there, there are no journalists that I would trust implicitly. None. There are people that I do in, that I do trust implicitly, though, because they speak about their thought process. People like Dave Rubin, right? Mm-hmm. Sam Harris, uh, Jordan Peterson. Like he gets Peterson gets lit up so much because what he says is abrasive, but he explains why he said all that stuff. They're like, "You're just a you're just a, a transphobe." He goes, "No, actually." I just think that controlling language is a really bad sign. And historically, it means that the government's getting too much control. It's a bellwether for the government getting too much control. So we can't do that. Yeah. But he did say and has said many times, I'll use the right pronouns if somebody tells me. I'm not going to be a dick about it. But you can't make that a law. You absolutely cannot. And he's right about that. But yeah. he gets called homophobic and transphobic all the time. And it's nonsense. But he explains why he thinks what he thinks. And most of these people... When I, when I say people, I mean these journalists, they make a claim and write an opinion piece or write a, uh, an, an analysis. That's CNN's code word, by the way. If you see a tag analysis, it's just somebody's opinion. Yeah. Um, they'll write this and you ask like, why did you say this? Like, I don't know, could be true. Like that's not journalism. No. And it's also not very responsible or ethical. Yeah, I mean, you know, like every time, like especially having articles wrote about me, mm. um, I always see them, like they form their, like, they they have the message they want to say, and then they only go find. They only it's put called confirmation in a, bias. Yeah, that, yeah, like that's like that's what I see all the time. Like they already have the story they want to get out, and then they go and and find the supporting details. Well, there's this old quote: uh, "Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story." Yeah, never let the facts ruin a good story. Yeah, I mean it's it's that's a real thing in the media for sure, and it's it's problematic. Um, so I really only trust people that I know are in the scientific fields of like n- neurology and, and sociology and shit like that, because politicians, I don't trust any of them. Not one, yeah. not one, because even the good people I know that have gotten into politics have become corrupted. So what are we going to, um, so what are we going to do with this show? Well, what I want to do is take a look at all the stuff that's going on in the world and, uh, you know, do some critical thinking out loud for the benefit of other people. I don't think yeah. that happens enough. I think it happens on Rogan a little bit from time to time, but Uh, It doesn't happen enough where the issues that are going on day to day in this world are discussed by people who have nothing to lose by admitting they don't know what's going on or that they're wrong. Because I don't care. Like if I'm wrong, every year you are always wrong until you become right. Mm -hmm. I was wrong about math until I learned math. Like if somebody said, what's two plus two? I'd be like, oh, no potato. You know what I mean? When When I was three years old and then when I was five and I learned that. Then I was right. I was wrong about that my entire life until that point. Yeah. And everything else I've learned in my entire life, I was wrong that whole time until I learned it. It's not hubris to be sure that you're right. And it's okay to be wrong. It's, it's perfectly, you should be wrong. If you can't admit you're wrong, then you're never going to be truly right. Yeah. You're just going to be cognitively dissonant and 
faking the funk, so to speak. And it doesn't help anybody. Um, like I said, there are all these people out there that don't know what to think anymore. And they don't really know who they... I, I, I talk to so many people who are Republicans who don't really know who they identify with as a political party anymore. They're like, it's definitely not the Democrats, but I don't think it's the Republicans either. And it's not because classical uh, conservatism or, or liberalism has changed. Those, those principles are still the same. We've just I fucked we, it up. I mean, well, I mean, I, but, I, but I, I, I would go even further. I think that the, country's, the country has evolved and they haven't, mm. right? Like, like, but you look at it and the majority of the people who are running these parties are a generation that has no, I mean, could you imagine our grandparents like trying to deal with the shit that we deal with yeah. today? Right. No, like, they would never be able to handle it. Like my grandma, it's a different world. It's a different world. Right. So like when our leadership doesn't evolve with the times, right? Like, like that's, that's part of the problem. And I think yeah. that, that both parties have got to be more in touch with what the world needs. And I mean, you know, there's we, a, there's a good balance. Like you don't want to listen to 22 year olds for sure. Well, no, because but, they mean, don't know shit about life. No, but you but, also don't want to listen to 70 year olds in my opinion, because they have nothing left to, I mean, they have wisdom to contribute, but as far as how we should shape society for the next 40 years, they have nothing to say to me. And I think it's pretty simple. Like, you know, I look at, you know, you talk about the riots right now, you mm -hmm. talk about coronavirus, whatever it is. Right. I just look at it and I say, Hey, um, is what we're doing going to put our children the, like set, leave the, our children in a world that's better than, than right, we yeah. found it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that should be one of the questions that you always ask yourself in any policy, whatever it is. Um, is this making the world a better place somehow? And am I going to be able to explain this to people in 15 years and it makes sense? I think, yeah. that's, a, I think that's a good question to, to ask because there's a lot of stuff. Everybody out there has been in a situation where they're panicked under a time crunch or or nervous or anxious whatever it is and you make a decision sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad but you really can't explain it we should never make lasting policy under duress ever no. but this is what happens with the gun debate every time that's like that's like that's like calling up a uh, you know a, a calling up in a relationship when mm. you're pissed off yeah it's just a bad idea it does you no good no it does you no good um i'm with you like i just i just want to take like the issues that are that are pressed right now that people are, you know, that, that's going on and, and try to break it down into a, a point of here's the facts, right? right? Like, I think if you don't want to hear the facts and, and you just want to get, you know, be emotionally charged by the media then this probably ain't the show for you. No, it wouldn't be. I mean, if you don't want to have your beliefs challenged on a regular basis, then the show is not going to be for you because yeah. like I said, I was wrong about everything I've ever thought about until I was right. And the same is with everyone else. This is how it works. But here, here's the problem now. We, we spend, the left and the right spend all this time screaming at each other, yelling party talking points, and you know, regurgitating nonsense about the other side that they've heard on the internet that's probably half true at best. And nobody actually speaks to one another. Good ideas evolve with conversation and bad ideas get exposed with conversation. Conversation. Yeah. conversation. But conversation requires two things. It requires talking and listening. Mm -hmm. uh, I say like, I, I was giving an analogy the other day, like I feel like the country right now is, like we're not like all of us, no matter what group you're in, we're mm -hmm. not that far off from right and wrong. Right. We're not that we're not as far apart as we think we are. Like, yeah, I mean, I could we could pick a couple of things that we'd be exact opposite on the mm. side of the field, right? But I feel like if you go down to the core values of what really truly matters to us, we're all not that far apart. You know what I mean? Because because if you were, then you know you you probably wouldn't live in this country, right? I mean, there are some people in the younger generation, particularly, and then some older hippies uh, that seem to have this romantic idea of socialism. And I honestly don't know where it came from because the socialism that we've well, dealt with. Well, it came with, from the education system. Uh, sure, and a lar large I mean, you, degree, I'm you sure. Take, that's, you that's take true, traditional yeah. education mm. is, is nothing but glorified socialism. Well, I mean, the military is the most socialist organization on earth, well, frankly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, that, that's probably true, yeah. And it, but I don't understand why it's, I don't understand how you can be an intelligent human being and buy into that when every single example ever is not great. Well, I mean, but, but it's not like you're not using your intelligence. You're using what's easy. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's a problem too. Like, so like I said, if you're not, 
Like what's your, if you're like, not up for being challenged. Like if you go to if you go to high school, mm-hmm. you take the last me, me and me and Jesse actually just had a conversation on this. But you take you go to high school. It it, it sets you up for socialism. Right. Like why would you like why would you want to get your assignments done more? Why would you want to stay focused, mm-hmm. like and do better or compete against each other when everybody's going to finish at the same right at the same time? Mm-hmm. Like there's no incentive for for you to do better. Well, I mean, that, to me, that is a problem of uh, parental involvement. I mean, but uh, even even the parents, right? Like, okay, so let's say you get all A's. Like, yep. like what is the standard, right? Like, and really, who gives a shit? Like, you're going to get all A's for learning shit that you're never going to use, right? Right? Like, so how do you push it, right? Like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, I, well, I mean, it's a it's a macro organization, so you have to teach, but every but the every, most amount to the the most amount of people, right? But it's the funnel, yeah, where every single person goes through. It is, yeah. But I mean, you got, everybody's got to have a basic understanding of math and science. You don't necessarily need to know algebra. Don't you think you learned that by the eighth grade? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, I, I really think that, like, I mean, let's see. In a lot of European countries, you graduate high school when you're 17 and not 18, and you do a three-year degree program instead of four, which I think is smart. Like airborne school in the Army, for example, is three weeks long. It should be maybe six days long, Yeah. honestly. Like, you don't even, you, you don't learn anything most of the day you just kind of run places and yeah, then yep. you do a couple things here and there and I'll, I, do you maybe see? maybe hey, yeah, maybe they think they have it down to a science but i promise you a, a reasonably smart human being can figure all that stuff out in just a couple of days i learned to skydive free fall mm. in three days yeah i mean it's not rocket surgery so uh things like that so in, in europe and i felt like this in college too i'm like why am i taking this and this and this like why don't i just do all this at once it never made sense to me that it, they stretched it out over four years now in, in universities you know why it's because uh one it's always been that way and they're very slow to change and two because there's more money if you go for four years in, instead of three i mean look how many how many credits does it take you to get through high school um like a hundred and let's see you know what that's a good question it's 120 for college it's not that for high school like for high school you take one, two, three, four, eight classes per term, so 16 per year. I'm and looking this up right now. Yeah. I'm actually interested in see what this is going to be. But it's too much. I mean, look, you don't there, – there are classes on uh, – So I, I'm saying, like, so required credits. So let's just talk about required credits for high school. Let's just talk high school in Kentucky, right, from, from mm-hmm. where I went. Kentucky. They have schools in Kentucky, you're saying? Yeah, yeah actually. There's like two. Mm. Um, so required credits, um, you have to have... How many? Um, 90? 100? Uh, no, shit, it's not that many. Um, new minimum graduation requirements. So your required credits, you have to have... Okay, here you go. Four English credits. Right. Four math credits, three social studies credits, three science credits, and then um, other credits. Um, So for high school, you need, I mean, obviously, I think it's just because it's four years is why you need four credits. But but hold on, but the incentive, like, they want to keep you, like, that's why you have all these electives. Mm. Because they get paid on attendance-based funding, not performance-based funding. Right. Well, what is what is performance based? So the, you have to talk about education as a whole. Now, I was uh, privy to a study that happened in California uh, in 2012, and it was a study of various geographical regions of the United States, yep. uh, and then student performance. And, and some of the subsections were uh, poverty, wealth, uh, race, mm-hmm. gender of the child, uh, the state that they were in, all this other stuff. There was a lot of demos going on, and the only thing that stood out significantly between one student and another, regardless of what demos and geographic location they they fell in, the most most common predictor of success was parental involvement, right? And and it was parental involvement insofar as the parents were checking their work, realizing that they weren't getting enough or too much or whatever it was. Like some kids succeed differently than other kids. Some people are going to be really good at math. Some people are going to be really good at English. Just because somebody gets C's in math doesn't mean they shouldn't get a good uh, go to go to college. That that never made sense to me. No, like if you're bad at math, but you're a great writer, 
why are you not able to go to college and, and use your writing skills or but, vice versa? But imagine if we step back and we looked at these schools. So like I'm a big, I'm a big proponent for charter schools. Mm. Um, I think traditional schools are, are, I think it's bullshit, right? Why can't uh, oh, finish your thing and I'll, and I'll ask you my question. So I, I think, I think what we do is, is at the eighth grade, um, you go into what's called an individual lessons plan. So I mm. started this conversation back with, uh, Actually, it was the commissioner of education in Kentucky mm -hmm. back in 2012. Um, and so my, but, but like literally the only reason they're like, I, like nothing ever does good with the government running it. Um, and there's no competition. Right. So I wanted to come in and what my idea was is, hey, all your kids that you put in, like, so if you look at, at um, we called it a school, but like, what is it like? alternative school mm. so basically the kids that the teachers say fuck it i can't teach them right i'm gonna put them in this other school that's easier just so i can still collect the paycheck because it's a seat it's, Correct, it's a yeah. button a seat right that's literally all that is mm. i mean it is a failed system especially for those kids i came in and said hey i want to pick five schools mm. and build these charter schools and i want to do individual lessons plans for each kid right so teachers then become facilitators and what they do is, is you sit back and your board of education does nothing more than tracks these kids' progress. So like if they see this kid slacking mm -hmm. off or failing, hey, what's going on in your life? How can we adjust this up? It's 24-7 education, right? So when you get on your computer, like if you have a child, right. like let's say you have a kid or, or like in my town, like a lot, of, a lot of kids had to work. Once they got an age to work, they had to work and bring an income right, in for, yeah, their, yeah. for their families, right? But imagine if you could work a lessons plan around that. And you say, hey, look, yeah, so for you to graduate, you know, you've got seven assignments done this week. Right. And you got to knock them out at your pace. I mean, look, the, this is a lot more plausible today than it was what I'm a saying. year ago. But, but exactly. Look at it now, yeah. right? Like if you say that, that brick and mortar schools are the way to go, then how are we doing education right now? Yeah. I mean, my girl's kid, he's 12, he's in seventh grade. He goes to actual classrooms Monday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, it's all virtual. And it's so, Tuesday and Thursday, all he does is make sure his work is done. So, so Friday, they have like, an, like a Zoom meeting or whatever it is. Or So my thing is, so here's what the state's role is, mm -hmm. is they come in. Look, if ACTs and SATs can tell you where a student's at enough mm -hmm. to judge them on if they can enter college, then the state should be able to come up with a test that says, hey, this student is mm -hmm. now a sophomore, a junior, and mm -hmm. now has graduated. Isn't that what BSAP is in the South? It's like a test you take in 10th grade to make sure you're on a 10th grade level, but then they never check again after yeah, that. Yeah, but see, the problem, though, with that is, is that now, like, the state has came in and has built all these tests, mm. and, like, there's all kinds of tests, like, keys tests, like, I think in Texas it's called the star test, mm. like, all kinds of shit. So now the teachers don't teach. So my thing would be is, is that what happens is, is that when this student comes in, in in a freshman year, like they're asked, hey, what are your goals, right? And if this student wants to bust their ass mm -hmm. and wants to be done at, at a fre you know, be done with a freshman in six months, right? They can do it, right? And, and and so, but the thing is, is by the time we let them go as a senior, they either have to graduate with a trade or they have to graduate with an associate's degree, right? Right? And so now, now think about this though. Okay. Now, my schools don't get funded. I don't get paid $1 for the student mm. until they have passed. So each year you get paid, right? So once the student passes, so you're going performance based without funding. income, I guess. Huh? I mean, if you start kids off, are you going to have a senior class? Like, how do you track somebody if you start it right now and there's a. I'm saying, like, you would seniors. get. So, like, I, they wouldn't pay me that year of the no, student. No, I got, I got what you're saying. I'm saying people that are seniors right now that transferred over to your school. I would, you'd have to figure that out is all I'm saying. Oh, Here, so, I, I have some questions. Why can't, if, if this is such a great idea, why isn't every school like that? What do you mean? Like if this is such a great idea. So you may tell you why? I, well, I, know, I know why. It's because people don't give a shit about education. I know. And you know why they wouldn't let me do this? So like they wouldn't let me do this because what happens when I, when I embarrass them? Yeah. What happens when I embarrass them? Uh, then they have to either attack you or do what you're doing. And it, But like the only the, people who kept that from coming in was the KEA, the unions. Uh, yeah, they, they certainly don't want any competition. Uh, they, they, they've, and that's another one of those uh, democratic uh, yes. intractable positions, the idea of, that the union, and look, if you, if you talk behind the scenes to union people, particularly in education, they will readily admit all the problems, uh, but they'll never say in public, and they also enforce it in public 
as if those problems don't exist, which I think is very irresponsible, frankly. But imagine if you also had this, like, so in, in my system, what would happen is like teachers work just like normal human beings, mm -hmm. um, 12 months out of the year. Yeah. Um, yep. and what they would do is they're called facilitators. So mm -hmm. this group of teachers, so you'd have an A and B group of teachers. Mm -hmm. So while the A group of teachers are teaching, they teach the first six months of the year. And then the B group of teachers teach the second six months. And while, let's say during the first six months, while the A group of teachers are teaching, mm. the B group of teachers are going out and they are looking at the way the systems that are being used in mm. businesses in the local area and places where we see it going and also looking at the way colleges are working. I mean, they could be managing the kids as interns in places as well. Hold on, it gets even better. So they're doing that and then they're also preparing their lessons plan of how they're implementing these systems into their teaching over the next six months, right? I mean, that's how the, that's how basic training changed between Korea and Vietnam. There you go. Like in, in Korea, all the, the drill instructors and, and drill sergeants were just, you know, whomever was there. Uh, in Vietnam, about a couple, a couple years in, after the, the, the low intensity stuff started, once actual ground troops started, that first group of ground troops that redeployed back to the United States became drill sergeants that they had just been there, like yep. put these guys in here, train them up, then you can go home. Yeah. And I think that's a good idea. But I... I so what's shoot the I, holes through it? Um, well, charter schools are problematic in general because uh, if there's not some kind of public transportation option that's reasonable, then low-income families especially get excluded. Typically. So, so this is targeting low-income families? Sure. So if it's in the... If you can take care of the transportation issue, I don't see a big deal with it. But I'll, also, I, I, I beg the question... Uh, if this is such a good idea, then all schools should be like this. There's no amount of money that's too much money to spend on the education of our children. It's like, but it'd be cheaper, right? So, like, look at look go 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 look at a, so so think about this. Look at a staffing of a high school. Look at these crazy huge high schools mm -hmm. right now, right? How many people? So let's say. Oh, it let's, takes about forty-eight thousand dollars per year per child in elementary school. So 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 think about that. I don't know that. what a high school is. Look at the money we could take back mm -hmm. to put into technology. And, and so when you talk about you talk about for low-income students, mm -hmm. like. They don't, they don't have to come to school. The only time they have to come to school is when they need the facility. Right. Right. So like if we can vote from home, we can trust these students to take tests from home. I mean, they're either going to do it or they're not. But, but, but I think, right? yeah. 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 And it's, it's the same if they were in the class, like maybe the testing part they can flub. But if you, if you use one of the professional proctoring companies to do the real test to just at the end of the year, whenever it is to see, then you'll know for sure. But don't, like but, they either, they either did the work or they didn't. But don't you think that. Don't you think that if kids felt like that, that the shit we're teaching mm. was really going to set them up for success, that they wouldn't take more pride yeah, in it? Yeah, people don't pay. Like, I didn't pay attention in my English classes because, yeah. like, yeah, I, I, I understand literature. I got it. Yeah. Can, we, can we move on from this shit now? I, mean, I was telling Jesse earlier, like, I never took a book home. I'm not that smart, and I never took a book home. No, I didn't study. I quit college because I was like, like this is dumb. Like, yeah. like, like, why am I like, like, why am I sitting? Like, why am I doing all this bullshit? This has yeah. nothing to do with what I want to learn. I found myself intentionally taking harder electives that I didn't need to because I was bored with it. Cause you're frankly, bored. Yeah. Right. And I was taking like, uh, I was doing like 16 to 18 hours per semester or per, yeah, per semester. And which is a lot, by the way, yeah. I, I just like, I needed it. I needed to be, I knew that if I didn't, get it done as quickly as possible and stay completely engaged the whole time. That'll be like, fuck this. Yeah. Quit. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was boring. I mean, I've got four degrees now, but it's like even, even back that's then, well, I mean, why just four? That's the amount that I've got. Yeah. I mean, man, I don't know. You should, you should probably like, there's a story too. We can get into it on a later you episode. Should probably but they happen. Stop being a loser. And, and I mean, dude, Day I've five. got, I have, I've got one degree. What is it? Huh? 98 degrees. No, I have, <laughs> I have a high school degree. Oh, nice. That's a diploma, yeah. not a degree, but sure. It is. But I also have a doctorate. And what? Oh, you got an honorary doctorate? I did. You should get an honorary bachelor's degree first. I didn't need that. Then move on up. You, hey, actually, from now on, <laughs> I want you to call me Dr. Meyer. I will. Yeah. I will, yeah. I'm going to start signing off as it. Yeah, why not? You should. Get I mean, it. Dr. Phil. Yeah, he's not. I mean, he's only a doctor of having a giant mustache for no reason. Yeah, he looks like a firefighter uh yeah a little bit yeah yeah right he does so um man what do you think about what do you think about what do you think is going to happen with this they're talking about um that a um 
that they're they're gonna a judge has now said district attorney has now said from the Virgin Islands yep. has now said they're gonna release the transcript that has every single person who has flew with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, I think that's interesting, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a telltale of like how Donald Trump reacts to this. Yeah. He's gonna tell you everything we need to know. Yeah. I mean, I, I to be honest, as as the way that Trump has spoken in public about it. I don't think he's don't think got anything to worry about. I don't think so either. Um, and I think honestly, if I, I have no reason to believe this other than just, you know, putting pieces together, but I wouldn't be surprised if the timing of this is no coincidence. There's oh. always something called an October surprise, yep. right? In, in electoral politics, particularly coming from the incumbent party. Um, and I could very well see Trump knowing that his name's not on that list and be like, you know what? We should put this list out because it doesn't matter if the person that went to the island is ever did anything actually wrong or not. Yeah. They will be guilty by association, which means he looked at the list and decided there were more people on there that he didn't like than he did. Probably. That's, I, I really think something was, like that. Happened. So dumb question. Was Jeffrey Epstein had to be a Democrat. Um, I mean, he was, uh, I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I think, I think he's just, I think he's just a, a vulture capitalist guy. Like he likes to move money around and uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I bet he, he's like the a many version of the, uh, the church of Scientology kind of gets blackmail on people and uses it to get access to their money and then starts, you know, moving it around and stuff and making himself money. I don't know if he was registered with one political party or not. Mm, it's not really, you could look him up on open secrets to see if he ever made any uh, contributions to campaigns, but he would have done it under, well, you have to do it under names. Yeah, I mean, like, like uh, Jeffrey Epstein, I bet you he's a, I bet you he's a Democrat. What, what makes you say that? Um, well, because, I mean, like, do you think a Republican's going to be hanging out with Bill, with Bill Clinton all the time? Well, look, I mean, it was different back then. Back then, people hung out. I mean, look, even, even relatively recently, uh, RBG passed away recently, and, uh, you know, everybody kind of remembers the fact and it, cause it's so odd that she and Anthony and Scalia was, were so close, you know, over the years. I mean, granted, if you spend all of your time with the same eight other people, you're going to either, you know, fucking leave or, or become super close with them. But still, I think that was, um, significant. So I don't know if, I don't know if that's a predictor of, of him. Yeah. I mean, maybe being not a Democrat um, or not, but he, I, I mean, look, everybody is a Democrat until they get rich. Yep. And then they're a Democrat about everything except for taxes. Yeah, I mean, it says, so basically it says that he, I mean, he donated to a ton of, of Democratic parties. I mean, it's not going to say which, which one he was registered as. Um, obviously, he, uh, he donated a ton to Hillary Clinton uh, when she was in the Senate. Um, let's see, the Clintons. But I mean, also, I mean, I guess he, he, you know, I guess he donated to, to Donald Trump, I guess. That's what it's looking like. I don't know. It's not saying you think that that would be up there, right? Yeah. Um, Isn't hold that kind of weird? I'm looking up his donor profile right now. So let's see. Money to candidates. I can't even find Charles it. Schumer. He's given a lot of money to Charles Schumer. That's it. Mostly Charles Schumer, actually, since 1992. So he's definitely either is now Tell or me this. was. You, I mean, you should be able to see what he was registered as, as, as a his political affiliation, right? Are you asking me if I think that's you that you should be able to do that? Or can you? Um, you can, yeah, sometimes. It depends on the record keeping that was done by the, uh, the various organizations that collect that stuff. So they, they have, like, they sell your data. All those campaigns, like, if you ever give your email or phone number to a political campaign, they're under no obligation to not share that with everybody else in their universe. So yeah. just expect to get more than one email is all I'm saying. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. Um, so I think that's going to be pretty interesting. I mean, I do think I do think this coming. I mean, I don't know. Like it's, it's September twenty first today. I, mean, I do think it's a little bit early uh, because it gives Democrats something to to come back on. Well, they so there was another article about uh, eight hours ago that said um, some information was about to get released and that the FBI is talking to people on the list. So the FBI already has the list. Obviously, they have all yeah. the docs. So the FBI apparently 
has been probing people and it's causing a panic. Yeah. They're say- oh, they're saying there's all kinds of panic. Yeah. Which is uh, good. Yeah. I like it when shit bags are panicking. Um, this is going to be, I don't know. Trump has, a, has had a history in the past of being, of making big announcements and then just falling flat. Like one of, one of them was in uh, shit. I think it was like 2013. It was like in six days, I'm going to make a huge announcement. Stay tuned. And the announcement was that he was hiring somebody to see if Obama was from Kenya or some shit. Like that's not, (laughs) that's not an announcement, dude. You just made, you just said that out loud. That's not an announcement. Nothing actually happened. You didn't figure anything out. Um, By the way, for Obama to have been from Kenya would have required the, the most sophisticated conspiracy of all time, like on the flight when his mom was pregnant, they would have had to have had the presence of mind to be like, Oh, you know what? We should fucking hurry up and get to Hawaii right quick. Yeah. And then go back to like, come on, man. You you have to, you have to at some point apply some, it's kind of like nine 11 being an inside job. Oh yeah. It's so stupid. We, we know firsthand how incompetent the fucking government is. There's no chance the government, there's no, No. if you had to have more than two people, I mean, hell, I mean, SEALs can't even run a mission and keep it, you know, six people. Well, I mean, look, they have those book deals, though, so it's like. Well, true, but. <laughs> uh, it makes it tough. Makes it tough. Yeah, yeah, money. Money makes it tough. Um, yeah, man, that, I, think, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I, I look forward to seeing who was on it. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, I, I, would, I would encourage everyone not to rush to judge them just because somebody, like those, those circles in, in the financial community, especially, you never know who you're going to run into. But do you think, I mean, but, like, but, but to be able to get close enough to somebody to get on their jet with them. Right. I mean, like, like, okay, let's just talk about us, for instance. Well, let me ask you how well you know your CPA. Do you guys go out and golf together? Okay, no, but I got you. To your house? Oh, you're right, but I got, I'm going to throw this one back at mm-hmm. you. I mean, I, 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 flew on, I flew on a couple jets, right? Mm-hmm. If I got on there and a girl looked underage... I mean, would would you not say something? I would absolutely. I would ask her for ID. You know me. I'm super blunt in public. Yeah. So like, hey, how old are you? And if she said something other than the right answer, yep. I would or be like, other than other than, hey, this is my uncle. Yeah. Well, right? yeah. Like, I, that like, would be the that would be the follow up. Like, what are you doing here? Like, what are you? hundred percent. Like, yeah. hey, this is my uncle or this is my yeah. dad. Like, yeah, no shit, right? So, so I mean, it's I, not about. So a lot of people would see that and say. Like, yeah, you should always cover your ass. No, you should look out for other people. Like, you should always be on the lookout it's not for even people about you. that have distressed eyes and stuff. Maybe they're just having a bad day and you say something nice and it makes their day better. Maybe they're under actual duress and you can help them right there. Yeah, right? Like, like just because you didn't see him have sex with an underage girl yeah. doesn't mean that you didn't know what was going on. Right? I mean, there's a lot of that. There's a, there, I, not Not sex with underage people i mean there's a lot of people that turn a blind eye to things when it's convenient for them to do so like if i say something to this guy right now i risk my financial future am i will really willing to do it right i mean for me it's no question yeah i mean i don't, I don't care about I don't, that I'll I, make, I guess i mean i don't know i guess i guess you're probably right i mean i just don't i i don't know i can't relate to that um you know i can't relate to it on a personal level because uh i'm just not that pragmatic I don't give a fuck about the results. I care about, I, I do care about the outcome, but I don't care about the results from me necessarily. Like I, I don't even think of myself as a person sometimes. I'm just like some fucking, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, like an agent that's available. When I say an agent, I don't mean like a fucking operator agent or specially, none of that shit. I mean, agent as in the human sense, like agency. Like, yeah, I mean, so I I'm a tool on earth to fucking help other people. Well, what, like that, what, that's a good else, way to What think else about are we here for? It. I don't know. I mean, if you read um, The Moral Landscape by Sam Harris, he's one of Rogan's favorite people, by the way. He's a neuroscientist uh, out in California and an author. The Moral Landscape is an attempt to uh, describe morality from the point of, of view of science, yeah. right? Because everybody kind of attributes religious allegory and all this other stuff and then just general common sense right? It's kind of like law. There's case law. There's, there's natural law, this other stuff. Anyways, um, the point of the moral landscape is to take a look at that from the scientific viewpoint. And his summation is that the most good something can be good or ethical or right or righteous, whatever you want to call it is to promote conscious joy. And the worst something can be is worst Something can be is to promote conscious suffering. Yeah. So we should both be trying to promote conscious suffering and mitigate Stopping conscious, conscious suffering. Or, uh, stop con- conscious suffering 
and 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 promote conscious joy wherever we can. So I think I so here's I think I, it's a really good way to think about life in general. So here's what I say is is that if you in that moment, so whoever on this list mm. in that moment did this, seen anything like a young girl on there, right. and stood by and said, "Hey, I don't want to risk." losing everything mm. I got by asking a question of what I know probably is not good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then guess what? I think you deserve the judgment and the hell you're going to. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to end up like, I think from this scenario, we're going to see like a uh, Dante's Inferno situation where there's seven layer, seven rings of hell. Obviously the mm. actual pedophiles are going to be at the lowest level, but the people who fucking let it happen. Yeah are going to be right there next to them. I mean, you're going to be sharing a gel so cell. I, I can't wait for them to expose these people, yeah. like to see who. I mean, you've got a lot of questions to answer. If you're a. And you know, if you want to come out and answer people. them, if you want to come out and answer them, yeah. if you want to come out and say, man, I fucked up. I should have seen that. I should have caught on. I should have mm -hmm. said something. If you want to come out and say that, that's where you deserve forgiveness. Yeah. Outside yeah. that, fucking bury them. But, and also, I mean, I, there's two steps to that. I'm not a religious person, but I, I believe the works and face combination in the Bible when it comes to uh, the soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation, I think. So do you believe the Bible is real? No. Oh, I mean, it's written by real human beings. Yeah, of course. But you don't, but I don't be believe in it. No, you I don't. Mean, there's, so you there's lessons to be learned, but the idea that we knew everything we've ever known about, uh, about eth ethics 2000 years ago, to me is a ludicrous proposition. And it's uh, the idea that, the, the, you know, the, the, even the New Testament has a very specific prescription for how to treat your slaves. So any, any book that can promote owning another human being to me is, but there's still lessons to be learned. Like you have to understand what it is. It's, it's allegory written at a time when people during a great awakening in human consciousness. It, it is really the was. most, it is the most accurate book ever written. Accurate in what regard? As far as like from a book back in the day. Uh, you mean historically yeah. speaking? I mean, I guess that that's debatable. The Romans were really good record keepers, but they didn't really, uh, all, all their gods really quickly turned into mythology after the fourth century, right? Like nobody believed in any of that shit anymore. As soon as Constantine came into power in the Council of Nicaea in 336 AD, that stuff kind of faded out. So we recognize that as allegory now. So we know that if you're reading about any of these old gods, Roman or Greek gods, you understand that it's not real, yeah. but that these very smart people were trying to tell you stories through that lens. And that makes sense to me, right? Like I understand that some of the lessons are good and timeless. Some of them were good for that time. Like the idea in, in uh, is it Leviticus or Deuteronomy where you're not supposed to eat pigs? It was because you couldn't keep swine. Like there's no refrigeration back then. It would get fucked up and then you would eat it and die. So people in control were like, hey, people are eating this and dying after this amount of time. Let's just get rid of that food altogether. And that's Christians why Jews and Muslims swine. don't eat pigs. But, 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 you're, but you're also talking about like Jews and Muslims. Well, I mean, the is difference it, between Christianity and Islam is time, in my opinion. Like Christianity, for the most part, has caught up with the times. They realize that regardless of what they believe, we still live in a world that has to have, you know, secular rules and things like that. And Islam doesn't want to believe that. They're still kind of stuck in the 8th century, and that's, that's a big problem. That's the biggest problem in my perspective. The, the doctrine is obviously different as well. Yeah. But there's just as much talk about peace in the Quran as there is talk about violence. The, and you, can do, you could say the same thing about the Bible too, particularly in, in the Old Testament, but mm -hmm. even in the New Testament. So I think the biggest difference is the people. People make that stuff what it is. Like you're, and that's a, that's a good lesson to learn too because – if you really believe in this stuff, and I would never disabuse anybody of their beliefs. I think people should believe in things. If you really believe in this stuff, you better go out and fucking act like it. You better act like the Jesus that you're talking about all the time. The guy that got down on his knees and washed a prostitute's feet while everybody else is talking shit. You, better, like that's, you better fucking show up and be that guy. But that like, but, but that's, You better be the Dalai Lama. You better be a, Siddhartha Gautama the Buddha. But that's you, like, but that's the example for us all to live. Like, mm -hmm to live to be right like i think i think that like i think a like you can't you can't look at anything and think that we weren't created mm. right like with a purpose right right like we don't like we don't just exist right i don't mm. think you can look at any i mean i think that's you, confirmation bias though i think that you exist therefore you feel like this this blind watchmaker uh theory have you ever heard of this like uh, a blind guy walks onto the uh beach finds a 
a, like a, a clock, a watch in the sand. He doesn't know what it is or what it does, but he knows somebody made it because it's too complicated to not be just not to yeah. not just exist. We see that in ourselves, but that there's that's because we live 80 years. But the earth itself has already been here for four and a half billion years. And our DNA, like human DNA in its present form, has been around for about 180,000 years. That's a long time. It's a long time. So it's, it makes sense, though. I mean, I, I think we should. The, the lesson, the point of that, like, what, what is the point of believing in that? The point is that you should be a good steward the of, point your, is, is of your if, planet. If you, right? don't, if you don't believe in it, if you don't, I mean, if you don't believe in a higher power, mm-hmm. You don't believe that we're going somewhere, right? At like somewhere, right? Like, and and if you don't, and you don't believe in hope, well, that doesn't it, mean I don't believe in hope. But but I mean, but but where does your hope come from? My hope comes from from me mostly, but, and so from but, humanity, because I've I've seen the bad parts of humanity, but I've seen the good parts too. But but on the backside of it, like you like, you know what I mean? Like I, so I I believe it's like. Like, I believe it's like, look, I, I don't, I don't, I go to a non-denominational church, mm-hmm. right? Like if you sit down, we, we should have my pastor on here. You talk about a guy who you're like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Um, like he is what I call realistic Christianity, right? right? Like, like, um, I hate the fear base, but I, I, you know, I, I think if you don't believe in something, I think the, the, the a person who doesn't, the, the, a man who doesn't believe in something is a lost man. Well, I mean, I believe in all sorts of things. Yeah, I just but don't. I, but I just a higher don't, power. I mean, people say that, like, well, what are you doing all this for if you just die at the end? Because this exactly, is, this is the only shot I get. I think it makes life. Way so more, why do you do? Why? Why? Why have? Because good? Because it's the right thing to do. Why? Why? Why separate good and evil? You know, um, the only thing that separates good and evil, that separates right and wrong, is literally intentions. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, look, the outcome changes. You don't always know all the facts and you act in a good way. And sometimes there's a poor result. You can't be blamed for that. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're myopic, short-sighted about it, or you're just unintelligent mm-hmm. on the issue and you go out and do something, then maybe you can, there's some to blame to be happy. Yeah, I agree with that. I like think the only difference between good and is, evil is, a big is thing, intentions. Yeah. yeah. But what's, I mean, you don't, it, look, I'll, I'll take this quote from uh, Matthew McConaughey actually in true detective season one. He said, if the only thing making you be a good person and not go out. I mean, this is, I'm paraphrasing, but the only thing stopping you from going out and being an asshole is the fear of, you know, punishment at the end. Or if the only thing making you do good stuff is the idea of getting rewarded at the end, then you're kind of a piece of shit. I mean, you should not ever do anything for those reasons. But I don't think, I don't think that those are the reasons. I think that, you know, you look at these stories, like you talked about, you know, like, like you take, you know, the, the son of the, you know, the, the highest power, Mm you know, the son that, that first off, he gives up the most important thing to him to sacrifice for everybody else's mm. sins, right? I mean, look at that story on its own, like somebody giving up the most precious thing. I mean, it's a good allegory, yeah, for you sure. I mean? like, and I think, I think there's a good chance. Here, my opinion on the Bible is, I don't even know if a man named Jesus ever existed. I don't think there's any real proof for it, but it's probably likely because yeah. there's no, like people don't just make up a name. They'll make up an idea, but usually they'll make up a name unless there's an actual human being there. But I think all the stuff written is supposed to be how do you live your life? Like that, like that's the whole point of the Bible is to get to the point of Jesus. And then he's the person that solves all these issues we've been talking about by living this kind of life. And this is the life that you should live. So you I think that's the so point. So do you think that there was anybody who actually lived that life? Um, I mean, it would be hard. I think probably the Dalai Lama right? Because it was cultural for them. There was no distraction for, for Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, maybe he, he came from a rich family, gave up all the stuff and went to meditate in the woods for a while. You know what I mean? And developed all these like passivist ideas about, think about this, like, coming you, together and things. You, okay. Let me throw But Muhammad, by the way, total piece of shit. Yeah. So, so let's think I, about there's, there, that is not uh, a judgment on mu- current Muslims or any of that stuff, but the man Muhammad, was a piece of shit. Yes. Like he fucking married a seven year old. So I, I have nothing more to say about that guy. So, so, so think about this though. Like, like we form our opinions by what we've seen and experienced mm-hmm. with society and people. Right. Imagine a man going in the woods to meditate by himself and coming up with these things. Yeah. I mean, it's profound. And, and Sam Harris talks about that in the, in the moral landscape as well. 
it's a, it's a really good book if you haven't read it, but it's, uh, he talks about the idea that some people can go into, uh, a, go into solitary confinement, wherever it is in prison or intentionally in a cave or wherever it is, or you get lost somewhere for 40 or 50 days. And some people are, some people are made crazy by it. And some people have get profound Clarity. discoveries. And it's interesting because if you look at all the new research on uh, the way the brain works, the idea of thoughtfulness or prayer or whatever meditation, whatever you want to call it, there is a there is a literal uh, and correlative physical benefit, mental health benefit, but also physically in your body. There's a benefit to doing those things. So if you're not, I mean, look, you don't have to do all the stuff that's right. Technically, we should all be eating right and doing all this stuff all yeah. the time. But I'm drinking White Claw, yeah. so we we make choices in life, right? But yeah. If you really want as a human being to be the best kind of human being you can be, and that's important to you, and it should be, you need to find one of these things, whether it's uh, the religion that you believe in, you need, to be, you need to actually do those things. Like peel off the bad shit because there's a lot of bad shit attached to religion. It's 2,000 years old for Christianity, yeah. you know, slightly older for Judaism. There's a lot of bad shit involved there. Peel that shit off and do the good stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Get involved in it and be the person that you're fucking talking about. Like, don't just sit around and judging other people for not being more like Jesus until you're like Jesus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I just don't, that, that's the thing that really turns me off about modern religion. We, 100%. Like, I mean, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that when they wrote the Bible uh, that, that they expected 30 different denominations of Christianity. Oh, of course they did. The Pharisees and Sadducees in the first century AD, come on, man. They were dicks. Like Jesus openly castigated them in the public square all the time. But but I'm saying like you think you think that like all these denominations, like they, like that's what Jesus meant was there to be like thirty different denominations of Maybe, Christianity. Maybe I mean because look, in Europe and in Asia, they didn't have so. they they weren't monotheistic, they were it, polytheistic. It they had like many, many especially in India, they have thousands of gods and everybody prays to a couple of mean ones and then they but pick they all the have the ones. same god like baptists you know presbyterian like they all have the same gods they're just a different denomination i think it's like sort a, of i mean look it, like that's the problem that's the only problem i really have with organized religion is that it's got the humanization factor to it everybody's to it. trying to figure out the theology and nobody's trying to figure out the sociology, which is the real important part of these books. Mm -hmm. The important part of the books isn't whether the earth is 5,000 fucking years old because that's the only timeline we have in the, in the Old Testament and yeah. in the book of Matthew. That's not the point of that book, and you've missed the point yeah, by making that argument. Point like Ken Ham, the Creation Museum guy in, in Kentucky, is nuts. And he's wasted all this money and time trying to convince people of this thing that is clearly scientifically not true. And he could have been using all that time and money and resources to help like sick and poor people. Yeah. Like all these giant mega churches like Joel Osteen. I hope that dude gets struck by fucking lightning. I'm He's not even going to lie. It, all the money that these guys, Kenneth Copeland, Paul and Jan Crouch from the TBN network back in the day. I don't even know if they're still alive, but all these people are Who total garbage. They are garbage people. If I see, if you're going to get into the ministry, if you're going to be a reverend or a priest or whatever the fuck else and whatever religion it is, and you're using it to make money, or you even allow yourself to make money. I know of a you couple a piece I'm thinking of, of right shit. now. You are a piece of shit, and you need to get the fuck out of people's way because it's not about the theology. It's not about whether or not God meant this when he said this because God didn't say any of that shit. People wrote it down. Maybe they were having some kind of communication with somebody, and, and that's how it happened, but it was still a human being that wrote it down and then translated it over the course of 2,000 years. What is the point, though? What is the point when Jews say, don't eat pork? It's not because pork is intrinsically bad. It's because it made them sick. 2,500 years ago, so they made a rule not to eat it. That's all that happened. Look at the point of this stuff, and the point of all these religions is sociology and philosophy. Yep. How, do, how do you live, and how do we live together? Absolutely. That's the whole point of all this shit. And if you're not taking that from religion, then you're, then you're, you're wrong. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it doesn't really matter to me what religion people are. I don't even think about that anymore. Yeah. Whether they're athe atheist, Muslim, I don't care. But if you live the right, like it's the, the golden rule from Confucius is the most common phrase in all of religion. Treat those as you want to be treated. Correct, yeah. Like it, it shows up in every religious text that's ever been written. And that's the one, the one foundation that we've missed in American politics. And that's one of the things that I want to come back. I want to be able to have tough conversations that are sometimes abrasive with people. Yeah. But at the end of it, be like, hey, you know what? Thanks for fucking sharing with me, and, and I'll think about what you said. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're not doing that, then just shut the fuck up and go home. You're just yeah. noise. I feel like the country right now is like, imagine imagine if we took 10 people. 
Mm-hmm. And, and we got them, and they believed the exact same thing, all the way down to, to everything. Oh, you could find something. But I'm saying, like, check this out. Like, w- like the country, this is the epitome of the country mm-hmm. right now, is that you take 10 people who believe the exact same thing, right? They're, they're, they're all on the same page. You plug their ears. You gave them all a gun. You walked them into a dark room, and you flipped the switch on, but none of them knew that their ears were plugged, and yet they were just screaming at each other, pointing the gun at each other. Mm-hmm. And guess what? what's the one problem they're all the same yeah they all believe the same thing but the difference that they found is is that they can't they're not hearing each other yeah i mean it's like right now with the uh the supreme court thing there's an open seat yep the republicans want to fill it democrats obviously don't want them to do that uh and i've played the audio and video from both years from 2016 and from 2020 all the Democratic people in 2016 saying it's the president's job to nominate somebody and the Senate's job to confirm them, including Ruth Bader Ginsburg herself, by the way, in 2016 saying this, and all the Republicans saying, no, not a lame duck president, blah, blah, blah. And then this year, it's all the Democrats saying, no, not a lame duck president. It's not fair. And all the Republicans are saying exactly what the Democrats said in 2016. But I got a question for None you. of these people are telling you the truth. None of them. I have a question for you. Do you really think, do you really think that her last dying wish. No, not a, not at all. Do you think she like looked up as she's dying? No. And said, she wouldn't have said that. Like I like 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 who like like do you uh, who how was that your last moment? If somebody walked into the room right now that you knew very well and they said or did something that was completely out of character for them, you would be like, "Is so, is everything okay? What's wrong with you?" And Ruth Bader Ginsburg made it very clear during the 2016 presidential cycle that she thought it was incumbent upon the president to nominate. Like she, she actually made the point before anybody else did. The president selected for four years, not three. So what the hell are you guys talking about? Like that was her point. Um, on the other hand, the way that Republicans are approaching this is completely hypocritical from the position they held just a few years ago. And that's the whole point. This situation with yep. Supreme Court right now is why I'm doing but this, this show. But this is what happens. This is why it's why I'm doing this show yep. because you can't listen to people that say different things based on what situation they're in. You should always say well, the on same how it fucking benefits thing. them, right? Yeah. Like this and this is where they all the politics have messed up. Yeah. Is like like you know what I mean? Like Be consistent, man. Be just be, just be How hard is it to be consistent? Well, I don't get it. It's hard. It's hard when you do things not because you believe in them, but you do things to get what you want. Yeah, I agree with that. And there's, there's a, look, it's, it's, there's nuance to it. People, if you truly believe in what you're doing, you're going to try to stay in power, right? Yeah. Because you know, evil thing. you know, if you're like, and that's not intrinsically evil to know like, Hey, you know what? My idea is better. And we see the results for it. Here they are. I got to do what I got to do to stay in power to make sure those results but stay like the same. But like some of this shit, how, that, did, how, did, that, how did... That is corrupting, right? How do they believe it? Like some of the shit they do, how do they think it's right? I have no idea. With the, uh, with the socialism stuff that's how, going on how, these days... How do they go home and think it's right? Like, man, there's a zero of, out of the, what, 200 years or so now, we've been tinkering with socialism in a major way, and like from Marx on. Uh, well, actually, before Marx, the pre-ideology of Marx on... Uh, it's never worked, not once. It's, all, it's always resulted in either communism or completely failed states in, in one case or another, right? Or it's resulted in an evolution of socialism, which is funny because capitalism evolved into like a hybrid between capitalism and socialism too. Yep. And every state that's kind of socialist, like Sweden, some of these other countries did the same thing, right? So in Sweden, this is a good example of something that's really smart about what they did. Their unemployment insurance never runs out. And it's the government's job to make sure you fucking get off your ass and get back into the fucking workforce. Yeah. If they've got to retrain you, whatever it is, and it's an investment and making sure that you might be a shiftless layabout for two years while we take care of this, but not for fucking 15, not yep. for 30. Yeah. And it's fucking smart. It works. Who cares about, oh, it's not right. Everybody shouldn't fucking have to fucking or be able to fucking whatever the fuck. I didn't have that opportunity. Shut the fuck up. Let's fix the goddamn problem. Let's fix it. Yeah, now you got and it. And move on with our lives. That, if we fix that problem now, it's going to take two years to fix it. Okay. If we let it linger, it's going to take 15 to 30 yeah, years. Yeah, but that doesn't, but that doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, like there's people who that doesn't help, right? Like there's people oh, who yeah, the power who doesn't sure, help. Yeah. No, there's people in power who that won't help. Oh, yeah. No, the cure is never yeah. a good sale. You want the fucking, you want the uh, treatment, not the cure. So, uh. The last thing we'll, we'll, the topic I think we'll hit on today, um, the CDC just came out 
and said, I'm going to quote it. I want to quote it here. Yeah, this is a big one. I mean, what, essentially what they said was that. The CDC says yep. its guidance that coronavirus spreads through the air was posted in air. That's not a good look. I mean, this is, this is the second time in a month and a half now that they've re- reversed position on something. I mean, I mean. Which is, hey, I'm fine with that, by the way. Come on, you don't. Like, you don't, science develops that way. So I think, I think what's going to happen, though, is is that that they're going to use this out of fear Mm -hmm. to put you back in the houses. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. I mean, they don't like, I don't think this is like saying, Hey, they're trying to, no, they're trying to make the case. Like the next step will be they'll, they'll, they'll give it the rest of this week to process. And then sometime Thursday, Friday of this week, maybe Monday of next week, they'll start talking about how uh, all these other masks don't work. And that the only real safe way to, to do anything is just, just to stay home. Yep, that's right? exactly That'll what they're doing. But unfortunately for them, it doesn't matter because the federal judge in Pennsylvania has already ruled that the government doesn't have the authority to tell you to shut your business down without yep. some kind of cause other than this. Yep. So they can get fucked, frankly. Yeah, that's I mean, it. this is not going to happen. And you can see what's happening. This is one of those things where the left is completely, uh, completely blind. They thought they had one. They, they, well, I mean, the, the, the voters on the left are blind. The politicians on the left are not. They but know I'll exactly say on the they right, they've been just as bad. For sure. But on, well, yeah, for a lot of different reasons. But I can deal with bad sometimes. It depends on what it is. But when it's stripping people's ability away to make an income for themselves. Absolutely. That is a no-go all the time. And I think it's one of the fundamental roots of the racial uh, oppression we see in this country. I think that the only color that matters in this country is green. Yeah. Like if you're rich, nobody fucks with you. Yep. If you're wealthy, if you're fucking... That the number one predictor of crime, of any other predictor, race, gender, even it's mental money. illness, is fucking poverty. Every, it's, it's been like that for 3,000 years so yeah. far as we've been uh, tracking uh, that kind of data. And it'll never change. That'll yeah. always be the case because the first generation in poverty does what they have to do. And the second generation believes that that's their culture now. But like, don't you, I, but don't I, you, I'm going to go sell drugs because that's what my parents did. But I go back to the same thing. I go back to the same thing that... Like, look, I was fortunate the military provided me an mm. opportunity to get out of my town. Yeah. But don't you think high school goes ahead and sets you in that, in that status level based off of, like, like, you know, if you've got the cool clothes and you're popular and you've got yeah, the family course, name, yeah. you're already up there, right? Yep. Don't you think it already puts you in that level going through? It does for sure. And it's, you know, it becomes problematic as you get older if you don't learn the lesson. If you don't right? learn the lesson. But, if you're not made to believe that you yeah. can do more. Yeah, yeah. But not, not a lot of people learn that lesson. And then, you know, if you, again, I don't mind these, like the sociological experiments are fine. People have to learn. They have to grow thick skin and all this stuff. So a lot of that is kind of a necessary evil, if you want to call it that. But the idea of. But you don't Iraq of, or Afghanistan war it where like no, you realize no, no. that it's fucked up and still keep no. trying to fix no, it. No, I really, I do think, no, exactly. Like every, you know I mean? everybody that was on the ground within a couple of months of both of those conflicts, literally months was like, fuck this. Yeah. Like you send me anywhere to fight. I'll fucking fight all goddamn day. I'll fight for years. But at least give me a chance to fucking win, dude. There's nothing to win here. Nothing. Like, to, what are we fighting for? Uh, which is irritating. And I think it, I think it robbed a lot of guys of their honor. Oh. You know what I mean? Because if you go through a lot of shit and you lose your buddy, like every time you think about one of your dead buddies, like what the fuck did that person die for? That, that, all the time. And then when you come back home and people like, depending on which city you go to, some people are waving flags and some people are looking at you like you're a fucking PTSD case. Yeah. Like that's, that has to have some intrinsic value. And whatever the cost of that is, Iraq and Afghanistan were not enough to cover that cost. Nope. Not even close. And not it's, even close. And it's, the, you know, it's been war after war, frankly. The, the last, I mean, we, we've done some micro stuff. I mean, a Gulf War made sense. Uh, the Grenada thing made sense. Panama, we created that situation. I don't know what the fuck that was all about. Yeah. But Vietnam and Korea were certainly not good things. Nope. Like, neither one of those were good. And World War II was the last real war we fought that actually meant something. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny because <clears throat> I have had dozens of conversations with World War II veterans and even Vietnam veterans. They're like, man, I don't know how you guys did this shit. I'm like, fucking, I don't know how you did that shit. Yeah. Dude, you guys, like, actually had something to fight for. Yeah. Not in Vietnam, but in World War II. Like these For old sure. timers are like, yeah, you guys, like we, we, we got into contact maybe once a month. You guys were in contact every single day for a year, a year and a half at a time. Like, yeah, but 
Yeah. It's not it's not even close. Not you, even close. I wasn't lying on the ground in the woods with fucking artillery rounds exploding trees around me. Yeah, yeah. I've never experienced that. Yeah. That's not even close to the same thing that we did. Yeah, no. we we fucking got in little gunfights here and there most most of the t- most days, but like that's not different. Uh, like 25 minutes of your day is not the same as hours lying in the mud that's frozen with where well, you got shit guys exploring. who are dedicated yeah to come kill you yeah wearing a uniform yeah so dedicated it's, that they're gonna wear a uniform it's way different i don't yeah. even know how our our current military would react to a uniformed army to be honest i don't know if they'd be ready for it like it would take some some time for them to adjust it would take it would take we'd have to lose a lot to wake yeah. people up cool man well i think it's a badass badass first episode yeah yeah i'm looking forward to uh you know looking at stuff that's going on in the regular regular day-to-day life and kind of you know, unpacking a little bit. Yeah. We'll, we'll I'll, I'll say some things that are wrong from time to time. Sure. And I expect you guys out there to correct us when Absolutely. we do that. Because that's, I, I don't like the idea that you can't say anything wrong in public. You have to be able to say wrong things and other people have to be able to respond to them. So you learn that they're wrong. Yeah. And that not only that you learned that they're wrong, but everybody that follows you and follows this other person follows that conversation and then sees who's right. It's not about ego or who's right or not. It's about getting the right fucking answer. And I, I think, I think, I think literally this podcast, and what we're trying to do is nothing more than to start the conversation. Yeah, like, like for sure. We're starting the conversation, right? And yeah. so with that, I'm sure we're going to fuck it up. I'm sure we're going to say some wrong things. I'm mm-hmm. sure, you know what I mean? It's, it's just going to be what it is. Um, but, you know, we need to figure out a place to where we can put these up to where people can get on and, like, we can get questions from weekly, stuff yeah, like yeah. that, like what they want to know, yep. their opinions. Like, I would love to have um, real, real opinions mm. Um, not, not, I don't need a bunch of fucking emotions. Right. Right. But I'd like logical opinions based on facts mm. and have a discussion. Where's that happening right now? Nowhere that I know of. Definitely not screaming in my car. No. Um, no. so, all right. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Yep.